Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into tonight's game, I wanted to talk about the sponsor of this video, Card Conduit. Card Conduit is the best service when it comes to selling your extra cards. Don't waste hours trying to find the best buy list price for your cards online. Simply send them to Card Conduit and let them take care of the rest. Send them your unsorted cards and Card Conduit will sort, grade, and find the best price for you online. They have three main services. Their standard service lets you send them unsorted cards of any value. They will sort, grade, and give you the best prices for your cards, including bulk. Their curated service is similar. Send them your unsorted cards worth over a dollar in value, and then they will charge half the fee of the standard service and charge no fee per card. Their new sorted service is a great value as well. Choose cards in advance with their selection tool, send them pre-sorted to Card Conduit, and they will grade and buy list them automatically. Save yourself the time of having to send them to multiple sites and let Card Conduit do it instead. Their fee is only 2% with no fee per card. They will give you the best price for your cards as well. They work with competitive buy listing partners, including ones not open to the public. Users get an average of 19% more for their collection than they would from any major retail buy list, even with Card Conduit's fees. They also optimize buy listing for card condition as well. Since vendors have different penalties for wear and tear, Card Conduit will find the best buy list priced against the specific condition of a card. So give Card Conduit a try today. If you sign up with my link in the description below or use the promo code POWER, you will also get 10% off their fees when you use their service. A big thanks to Card Conduit for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. This deck quickly assembles win cons with one card enablers such as Ad Nauseam or Peer into the Abyss. Zack's opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Vampiric Tutor, Peer into the Abyss, Flooded Strand, Toxic Deluge, Swords to Plowshares, and a Gamble. Next, we have Bailey, piloting the partner pair of Krark the Thumbless and Thrasios Triton Hero. This is a storm list seeking to leverage its commanders to outpace opponents on spells and advantage. Bailey's opening hand contains a crop rotation, Jataxian Probe, Stomping Ground, Polluted Delta, and his three London Mulligans are Force of Will, Lion's Eye Diamond, and an Underworld Breach. After that we have Aaron, piloting Valky, God of Lies. This is a mid-range control list seeking to disrupt opponents, play light stacks, and leverage its commander for advantage. Aaron's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Wheel of Fortune, Luxury Suite, Chrome Mox, Polluted Delta, and his London Mulligans are Turgrid God of Fright and Bolas' Citadel. Finally, we have Tony, piloting the partner pair of Thrasios Triton Hero and Vile Smasher the Fierce. This is a Turbo Hermit Druid deck seeking to mill its entire library and win as fast as possible. Tony's opening hand contains a Windswept Teeth, Worldly Tutor, Underground Sea, Dispel, Gemstone Caverns, Nurturing Peatland, and a Postmortem Lunge. Without further ado, let's kick off this fantastic, frantic, frenetic, feeble, friendly feud. Bailey was going to go first, but he took an arrow to the knee, so Aaron gets to start us off. But Tony and Zack have pregame actions. Tony puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Nurturing Peatland. Zack also puts the Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Peer into the Abyss. Aaron draws a card for turn and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Mana Vault and passes the turn. Tony draws a card for turn and also plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He casts his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. In response, Zack casts Vampiric Tutor. He fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. Then Thrasios resolves and the turn moves to Zack. Zack draws and casts up Mana Crypt. He plays a Flooded Strand for turn. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Toxic Deluge. He casts Rhystic Study. Zack ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Polluted Delta. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. He passes. Aaron draws and plays a Luxury Suite. He casts a Chrome Mox. Rhystic Triggers and Zack draws. Chrome Mox resolves and Aaron imprints Waste Not. He casts Wheel of Fortune and Zack draws through Rhystic. Each player discards their hand and draws seven. With nothing else, Aaron gives the turn to Tony. Tony draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts an Elves of Deep Shadow, paying for Rhystic. Tony ships the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts Counterbalance. In response, Bailey casts Swan Song and Zack draws from Rhystic. In response, Zack casts Fierce Guardianship, targeting Swan Song. In response, Tony casts Flusterstorm with all copies targeting Fierce Guardianship. Zack draws through Rhystic and Flusterstorm counters Fierce. With Swan Song still in the stack, Zack casts Force of Will for its alternate cost, exiling Thassa's Oracle and paying one life. Swan Song is countered and counterbalance resolves. Having a hard fought win, Zack gives the turn to Bailey. Bailey draws and plays a Yavamaya Cradle of Growth. He casts Mystic Remora, Rhystic and Counterbalance Trigger. Zack reveals an Esper Sentinel off of Counterbalance, countering Mystic Remora. Then Zack draws off of Rhystic. 
Next, Bailey casts Birds of Paradise. Ristic and Counterbalance trigger again. Zach reveals a talisman of creativity through Counterbalance and then draws from Ristic. Birds resolves and Bailey passes. Aaron draws and plays an Urza's Saga, getting its first counter. He casts Dark Ritual. Ristic and Counterbalance trigger. Zach reveals Demonic Consultation, counters Dark Ritual, and then Zach draws through Ristic. A very bummed out Aaron passes to Tony. Tony draws and plays a Badlands. Not wanting to get swept up in the whole counterbalance shenanigans going on, Tony passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes 3 damage. Also in his upkeep, he casts Enlightened Tutor. He fetches up a Sensei's Divining Top onto the top of his library. He draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts Esper Sentinel. In response, Aaron casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Ristic Study. Counterbalance triggers, Zack reveals a Badlands, then Ristic is destroyed. Then Esper Sentinel resolves. Next, Zack casts Talisman of Creativity. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. All through, Zack ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays a Manamo, School at Water's Edge. He casts Spellseeker. In response, Zack activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He then declines to reveal off of Counterbalance. Spellseeker enters, and Bailey fetches up a Neoform into his hand. Bailey gives the turn to Aaron. Aaron draws, and in his first main phase, Urza Saga gets another counter. He plays a Snow Covered Mountain for turn. He casts his Commander, Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. Esper triggers, and Zack draws. It enters, and Aaron gets an emblem. He activates Tybalt's first ability. Aaron exiles Ensnaring Bridge, Tony exiles Soul Ring, Zack exiles Jeweled Lotus, and Bailey exiles Kark's Thumb. Aaron casts Zack's Jeweled Lotus from exile through Tybalt. Counterbalance triggers, and Zack reveals a Mana Confluence, countering Jeweled Lotus. With nothing else, Aaron passes. At the end of Aaron's turn, Tony activates Thrasios, scrying one and revealing a Spellseeker into his hand. Tony draws and plays a Flooded Strand. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Spellseeker. It enters, and Tony fetches up a Finale of Devastation into his hand. Tony ends his turn. At the end of Tony's turn, Zack spins his top. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Talisman of Dominance. He casts Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. He taps his Talisman to help cast his commander, Krom Ludovic's Opus. He plays a Bloodstained Mire for turn. He moves to combat and attacks Tybalt with Krom and Esper Sentinel. Tybalt takes it, and Zack ships the turn to Bailey. Bailey draws and casts his commander, Krark the Thumbless. He casts Neoform, sacrificing Spellseeker as an additional cost. Krark, Krom, Esper, and Counterbalance all trigger. In response, Zack spins his top, rearranging the top three. Then Zack declines to reveal from Counterbalance, and he draws off of Esper and Krom. Bailey then wins his Krark flip, copying Neoform. It resolves, and Bailey fetches up a Treasonous Ogre onto the battlefield. With the original still in the stack, Tony casts Cyclonic Rift, targeting Treasonous Ogre, paying the Esper tax. In response, Bailey pays 12 life, adding 4 red. Then Ogre bounces back to his hand. Then the original resolves, and Bailey fetches up a Displacer Kitten onto the battlefield. Next, Bailey casts Storm Kiln Artist. Finished up, Bailey passes. During his draw step, Aaron takes a damage from his Mana Vault. In his main phase, Urza's Saga triggers. He floats mana, then sacks it, fetching up a Sensei's Divining Top onto the battlefield. He plays a Gemstone Caverns for turn. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Counterbalance triggers and, in response, Zack cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays a life, and fetches up a Scrubland onto the battlefield. He spins his top, rearranging the top three. He then declines to reveal. Dockside resolves, and Aaron creates six treasures. He activates Tybalt's first ability, exiling Blood Crypt, Delay, Mana Vault, and Gemstone Caverns. He casts Bolus's Citadel. Krom and Esper trigger, Aaron pays for Esper, and then Zack draws off of Krom. In response, Zack casts Demonic Consultation, desperately digging for an answer. It resolves, and he names Force of Negation. He exiles, exiles, and exiles, looking for Force of Negation. He finally finds it, puts it into his hand, but only after he exiled away most of his win cons. Zack casts Force of Negation, exiling a blue card, targeting Citadel. In response, Aaron casts Delay, targeting Force. Counterbalance triggers, and in response, Zack activates Top, rearranging the top three. He then reveals a Tainted Pack through Counterbalance, countering Delay. Then Force of Negation resolves, countering and exiling Bolas' Citadel. Next, Aaron casts Mana Vault from Exile. He casts an Ensnaring Bridge. Finished up, Aaron gives the turn to Tony. Tony draws and plays a Taiga. He passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. Also in his upkeep, he activates his top, rearranging the top three. He draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. Zack ends his turn. Bailey draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps it to help cast Bergy, God of Storytelling. He casts Twin Flame, targeting Stormkiln Artist. Krark, Stormkiln, Bergy, Counterbalance, and Esper all trigger. In response, Zack activates his top, rearranging the top three. Then Zack draws off of Vesper. He then reveals Tainted Pact off of Counterbalance, countering Twin Flame. Then Bailey creates a treasure, and then he adds a red through Bergy. Then Bailey wins his Krark flip, copying Twin Flame. Stormkiln triggers, and he creates a treasure. Twin Flame resolves, and Bailey creates a copy of Stormkiln Artist. He moves to combat and attacks Tybalt with Bergy, Kitten, and Krark. 
Aaron blocks Bergy with Dockside, then Dockside and Tybalt die. All through, Bailey passes, sacrificing his token of Stormkill. During his draw step, Aaron takes two damage from both of his mana vaults. He plays a Blood Crypt from Exile into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Soul Ring from Exile, Counterbalance and Esper trigger. In response, Zack activates his top, rearranging the top three. Then Aaron pays for Esper Sentinel. Then Zack reveals Mystic Remora through Counterbalance, countering Soul Ring. Next, Aaron casts Vandal Blast, targeting Sensei's Divining Top. Krom and Counterbalance trigger. Zack reveals Mystic Remora, countering Vandal Blast. Then Zack draws off of Krom. Next, Aaron casts Entomb. Counterbalance triggers. Zack reveals a Soul Ring, countering Entomb. Finished up, and with a hand small enough to avoid being attacked through Ensnaring Bridge, Aaron gives the turn to Tony. At the end of Aaron's turn, Tony casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Counterbalance and Esper trigger. Tony pays for Esper, then declines to reveal through Counterbalance. Then Brain Freeze resolves and Tony mills. Then Tony taps his Elves of Deep Shadow to activate Thrasios. He scries one and reveals a Lion's Eye Diamond into his hand. The turn moves to Tony. Tony draws and casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 2. Counterbalance and Esper trigger. Zack draws, then declines to reveal off of Counterbalance. Then Tony fetches up a Hermit Druid onto the battlefield. All through, Tony ends his turn. At the end of Tony's turn, Zack spends his top. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays a Badlands. He moves to combat and attacks Aaron with Timna and Esper Sentinel. Aaron takes it and Zack gains two life. In his second main phase, Timna triggers. In response, Zack activates his top, looking at and rearranging the top three. He then pays a life and draws a card through Timna. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mystic Remora. In response, Bailey casts Chain of Vapor, targeting his own Bergy. Kirk, Displacer Kitten, Bergy, Stormkill Artist, Counterbalance, and Esper all trigger. In response, Zack spins his top, rearranging the top three. Then Zack draws through Esper and declines to reveal from Counterbalance. Then Bailey creates a treasure through Stormkiln, adds a red through Bergy, flickers Kark through Displacer Kitten, and then resolves his Kark trigger. He loses the flip, returning Chain of Vapor back to his hand. With Remora still in the stack, Bailey casts Chain of Vapor again, targeting Bergy. Kark, Kitten, Bergy, Stormkiln, Counterbalance, and Krom all trigger. In response, Zack spins his top again. Zack then draws through Krom and declines to reveal from Counterbalance. Then Bailey creates a treasure through Stormkiln, adds a red through Bergy, Kitten flickers itself, then he resolves his Kark trigger. He loses the flip, returning Chain of Vapor to his hand again. Bailey casts Chain of Vapor again, targeting Bergy. Kirk, Kitten, Bergy, and Stormkiln trigger, and Zack declines to trigger his counterbalance. Bailey creates a treasure, adds a red, flickers Birds of Paradise, then resolves his Kark trigger. He wins the flip this time, copying Chain of Vapor, targeting Hermit Druid this time. Stormkiln triggers, and Bailey creates a treasure. Hermit Druid bounces, and Tony continues the chain, sacrificing a land, targeting Counterbalance. Counterbalance bounces back to Zack's hand, and then he doesn't continue the chain. With the original Chain of Vapor still on the stack, Aaron responds by activating his top, rearranging the top three. Then Chain of Vapor resolves, Bailey bounces Bergy back to his hand, and then Bailey doesn't continue the chain. Finally, Mystic Remora resolves. Zack recasts Counterbalance. In response, Tony casts Fierce Guardianship for its alternate cost, targeting Counterbalance. Remora and Esper trigger. Tony pays for Esper, and Zack draws off of Remora. In response, Zack spins his top, rearranging the top three. Then Counterbalance is countered. Next, Zack casts Underworld Breach. He escapes Dark Ritual from his graveyard, adding 3 black. He escapes Toxic Deluge, paying 3 life. He then wipes the board of everything except his own craw. He escapes Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Mental Misstep. Finished up, Zack passes, sacrificing Underworld Breach. Bailey draws and taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Harnfell, Horn of Bounty. He activates Harnfell, discarding Treasonous Ogre, exiling Force of Will, and Flooded Strand. He plays Flooded Strand from Exile. He activates Harnfell, discarding Mox Opal, exiling Steam Vents and Sylvan Library. He cracks his Flooded Strand, pays a life, and fetches up a Tropical Island onto the battlefield. He casts Sylvan Library from Exile. Krom and Remora trigger, and Zack draws two. Sylvan Library resolves, and Bailey gives the turn to Aaron. During his draw step, Aaron takes two damage from his two mana vaults. He casts Underworld Breach. Remora triggers, and Zack declines to draw because Aaron said he was going to wheel, and Zack's library is a bit on the thin side. Breach resolves, and Aaron escapes Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hands and draws 7. He plays a Bazaar of Baghdad for turn. He casts Mox Diamond. Remora and Grom trigger and Zack draws 2. Then Diamond resolves and Aaron discards Arid Mesa. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. This is game over for the table since Aaron has a wheel in his graveyard. So in response, Tony casts Mind Break Trap for its alternate cost, targeting Lion's Eye Diamond. Remora triggers and Zack draws. In response, Aaron escapes Red Elemental Blast, targeting Mind Break Trap. Remora triggers and Zack draws again. In response, Tony casts Entomb. Krom and Remora trigger, and Zack draws two. Entomb resolves, and Tony fetches up a Memory's Journey into his graveyard. With Mind Break Trap still in the stack, Bailey channels Beseju, who endures, destroying Underworld Breach. 
then Red Elemental Blast counters Mind Break Trap and Lion's Eye Diamond resolves. With Underworld Breach gone, Aaron has nothing else and passes to Tony. During his upkeep, Tony flashes back Memory's Journey, shuffling Underworld Breach, Postmortem Lunge, and Thassa's Oracle into his library. He draws and plays an Emergent Zone. He casts his other commander, Vile Smasher the Fierce. Chrom triggers and Zack draws. Tony passes. At the end of Tony's turn, Zack casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Zavine's Reclamation onto the top of his library. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. Also in his upkeep, he lets his Remora die. He draws and decides that his options are limited, so he casts, yes, casts, Simeon Spirit Guide in order to have an attacker. He casts Dragon's Rage Channeler. He plays an island for turn. He casts Savine's Reclamation, targeting his Underworld Breach. In response, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Deserted Temple, exiling Mind Break Trap, and Submerge off of the top of his library. He casts Mind Break Trap from Exile for its alternate cost, targeting Savine's Reclamation. In response, Zack casts Pact of Negation. In response, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Misty Rainforest, exiling Exotic Orchard, and Worldly Tutor. He activates Harnfell, discarding Gamble, exiling Dualcaster Mage, and City of Brass. With nothing else, Mind Break Trap is countered, and Savine's resolves. Zack returns Underworld Breach to the battlefield. Next, Zack escapes Time Twister. Each player shuffle their hand and graveyard into their library and draw seven. Zack casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Zack creates ten treasures. He casts Counterbalance. Everyone declares that Zack is a dirty cheater, but Zack reminds him he offered them a cut. Everyone laughs, and Bailey responds. He casts Worldly Tutor from Exile. Chrom triggers, and Zack draws. Then Bailey fetches up a Dockside Extortionist onto the top of his library. Then Counterbalance resolves. Zack moves to combat and attacks Aaron with Chrom. Aaron takes it, and in his second main phase, Zack casts his commander, Timna the Weaver. In response, Bailey casts Submerge from Exile for its alternate cost, targeting Chrom. Counterbalance triggers, and in response, Zack spends his top, rearranging the top three. Then Zack reveals a Force of Will through Counterbalance, countering Submerge. Then Timna resolves. All finished up, Zack ships the turn to Bailey. During his draw step, Bailey draws two extra through Sylvan Library, paying eight life to keep them both. He draws and casts Mox Diamond, discarding Windswept Teeth. He casts Lion's Eye Diamond. Chrom triggers, and Zack draws. Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Taiga, exiling Mana Confluence and Harmonic Prodigy. He plays a Mana Confluence from Exile. He activates Harnfell, discarding Ragavan, Nimble Pilfer, exiling Mystical Tutor, and Jeweled Lotus. He casts Jeweled Lotus from Exile. He cracks it, adding three red. He recasts his commander, Crark the Thumbless. Counterbalance triggers, and in response, Zack spins his top, rearranging the top three. He then reveals Tainted Pack through Counterbalance, countering Crark. Next, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Grape Shot, exiling Chrome Mox, and Gamble. He casts Chrome Mox from Exile, imprinting Snap. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Gamble from Exile. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards Dockside Extortionist, which is super painful for Bailey. Bailey casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Counterbalance. In response, Zack pays two life to cast Mental Misstep, countering Chain of Vapor. Next, Bailey casts Mystical Tutor from Exile. He fetches up a Noxious Revival onto the top of his library. With nothing else, Bailey ships the turn to Aaron. At the end of Bailey's turn, Aaron activates Bazaar of Baghdad, drawing two and discarding three. During his draw step, Aaron takes two damage from his two mana vaults. In his main phase, he casts Blasphemous Act. In response, Zack casts Silence. In response, Tony casts Assassin's Trophy, targeting Aaron's Lion's Eye Diamond. Vile Smasher triggers and deals two to Zack. In response, Aaron sacrifices his LED, discards his hand, and adds three red. He does this because now no one can attack him through Ensnaring Bridge. Silence then resolves, and with Blasphemous Axe still in the stack, Zack casts Force of Will, exiling a Force of Negation, paying a life, and countering Blasphemous Act. With nothing left to do, and nothing left in his hand, Aaron passes to Tony. Tony draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. He casts Ristic Study. Vile Smasher and Counterbalance trigger, and in response, Zack spins his top, rearranging the top three. He then declines to reveal through Counterbalance, and Vile Smasher deals three to Aaron. Then Ristic resolves. Tony gives the turn to Zack. During his upkeep, Zack wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and casts Savine's Reclamation, targeting Underworld Breach, paying the Ristic Tax. Savine's resolves, and Zack returns Underworld Breach to the battlefield. Zack casts Tainted Pact. Ristic triggers, and in response, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Twin Flame, exiling Noxious Revival, and Heat Shimmer. He casts Noxious Revival from Exile, targeting Zack Savine's Reclamation in his graveyard. Ristic and Counterbalance trigger. In response, Zack activates his top, rearranging the top three. He then declines to reveal. Tony draws off of Ristic, and Noxious Revival puts Savine's Reclamation back on top of Zack's library. Then Tainted Pact resolves, and Zack exiles Savine's Reclamation, putting it into his hand. Next, Zack escapes Time Twister. In response, Bailey casts Flusterstorm, with all copies targeting Time Twister. Then Zack pays for all copies of Flusterstorm. With Time Twister still in the stack, Tony cracks his Emergence Zone, giving his spells flash until the end of turn. He then flashes in a Hermit Druid. 
Counterbalance triggers, Zack reveals a talisman of progress, countering Hermit Druid. Then Time Twister resolves. Each player shuffles their hand and graveyard into their library and draws seven. Zack sinks his head in despair. One of the seven cards he drew was Pact of Negation, which reminded him of his Pact of Negation trigger he should have paid on his upkeep. Since it is a detrimental trigger, the table decides to put it onto the stack immediately. Zack unfortunately cannot pay and loses the game. The turn moves through steps and phases, and at the end of Zack's turn, Aaron activates Bazaar of Baghdad, drawing two and discarding three. The turn moves to Bailey. During his draw step, Bailey draws two extra through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. He plays a Taiga for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Tavern Scoundrel, paying the Rhystic Tax. In response, Aaron activates his top, rearranging the top three. He then flips his top, drawing a card and putting top on top. He casts Tybalt's Trickery, targeting Tavern Scoundrel. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. In response, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Mystic Remora, exiling Arid Mesa and Breeding Pool. He activates Harnfell, discarding Rhystic Study, exiling Polluted Delta and Manamorphose. He casts Manamorphose from Exile. He adds two green and draws a card. He activates Harnfell, discarding Candelabra of Thanos, exiling Soul Ring and Jewel Lotus. He activates Harnfell, discarding Misty Rainforest, exiling Final Fortune and Gamble. Unfortunately, he could not find what he needed and Tybalt's trickery resolves. Tavern Scoundrel is countered and Bailey rolls a two. He mills two and then reveals until he hits a Mox Opal, casting it. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. Next, Bailey casts Eternal Witness. It enters and targets Tavern Scoundrel in his graveyard. In response, Tony casts Deflecting Swat for its alternate cost, targeting Witness's ability. Vial Smasher triggers and deals three to Bailey. Then Tony changes the target to Misty Rainforest in Bailey's graveyard. Then Bailey returns Misty to his hand. Next, Bailey activates Harnfell, discarding Misty Rainforest, exiling Worldly Tutor and Birds of Paradise. He casts Final Fortune from Exile. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. Final Fortune resolves and Bailey casts Soul Ring from Exile, paying the Rhystic tax. He casts Ledger Shredder, paying the tax again. All through, Bailey moves to his extra turn. During his draw step, Bailey draws two extra through Sylvan Library, putting two back on top. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Eldritch Evolution, sacrificing Ledger Shredder as an additional cost. Rhystic triggers and Bailey pays. Evolution resolves, Bailey fetches up a Displacer Kitten onto the battlefield, then exiles Eldritch Evolution. Next, he casts a Spellseeker. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. In response, Aaron casts Fire Covenant, paying 6 life, targeting Eternal Witness, Displacer Kitten, and Vile Smasher. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. The creatures die, then Spellseeker resolves. Seeker triggers and Bailey fetches up a Chain of Vapor into his hand. He taps all of his rocks and lands, including Mana Confluence, floating mana. He casts Chain of Vapor, targeting Spellseeker, paying for Rhystic. He holds priority and sacrifices his LED, adding 3 blue. Chain of Vapor resolves, bouncing Spellseeker to his hand. He sacrifices a land, copying the chain, bouncing Mox Diamond to his hand. He sacrifices a land, copying the chain, bouncing Mox Opal to his hand. He sacks another land, copying the chain, bouncing Chrome Mox to his hand. He sacks a land, copying the chain, bouncing Soul Ring to his hand. He sacks a land, copying the chain, bouncing Sylvan Library to his hand, and stops the chain there. He activates Harnfell, discarding Sylvan Library, exiling Mental Misstep, and Scalding Tarn. He activates Harnfell, discarding Chrome Mox, exiling Brain Freeze, and Frenetic Afrit. He activates Harnfell, discarding Mox Diamond, exiling Seaborn Muse and Stomping Ground. He uses his floating mana to recast Spellseeker. It enters and he fetches up a Noxious Revival into his hand. He pays two life to cast Noxious Revival, targeting Manamorphose in his graveyard. Rhystic triggers and Tony draws. Then Noxious puts Manamorphose on the top of Bailey's library. He activates Harnfell, discarding Soul Ring, exiling Manamorphose and Ragaban Nimble Pilferer. He casts Manamorphose from Exile and Tony draws from Rhystic. Bailey adds two mana and draws a card. He activates Harnfell, discarding Verdant Catacombs, exiling Jataxian Probe and Gaius Cradle. He activates Harnfell, discarding Mox Opal, exiling Training Grounds and Baron Master Wizard. He casts Jataxian Probe, targeting Tony. Rhystic Triggers and Tony draws. He looks at Tony's hand and draws a card. Bailey casts Underworld Breach. Rhystic Triggers and Tony draws. With no answers, Breach resolves. He escapes LED from his graveyard and Tony draws through Rhystic. He sacks his LED, discards his hand and adds 3 red. He escapes LED again and Tony draws through Rhystic. He sacks his LED and adds 3 blue. He escapes Tavern Scoundrel and Tony draws through Rhystic. He casts Frenetic Efreet from Exile, paying for Rhystic. With no answers, Efreet resolves. Bailey activates Frenetic Efreet. He holds priority and activates Frenetic Efreet hundreds of thousands of times. Every time he wins a flip from Frenetic Efreet, Tavern Scoundrel triggers and Bailey creates two treasures. Now, with an absurd amount of treasures, Bailey escapes Displacer Kitten. He escapes LED again. Kitten triggers and Bailey flickers Spellseeker. It enters and Bailey fetches up a Grape Shot into his hand. Bailey escapes Eternal Witness. It enters and Bailey returns Ledger Shredder to his hand. He casts Brain Freeze with all copies targeting himself. Kitten triggers and Bailey declines to flicker anything. Then Brain Freeze resolves and mills the rest of his library. 
Bailey escapes Brain Freeze with all copies targeting Aaron. Kitten triggers and he flickers Eternal Witness. It enters and he returns Pyroblast to his hand. Aaron mills nearly his entire library. Bailey casts Pyroblast, targeting Aaron's Mox Diamond. Kitten triggers, Bailey flickers Eternal Witness and returns Brain Freeze to his hand. Then Pyroblast resolves but doesn't destroy Mox Diamond because it's not blue. Bailey presents a loop of casting and looping Brain Freeze and Pyroblast over and over, milling out each opponent and returning them to his hand through his Kitten and Eternal Witness. Using this loop, he can generate Infinite Storm. He casts Grape Shot with a high enough storm count to kill his opponents, and Bailey wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible game. Everyone played to the fullest and the interaction was all over the place this game. Congrats to Bailey on his win. He was disrupted many times, but was able to climb back after Zack's unfortunate Pact of Negation trigger. He used his knowledge of his deck and his excellent skills as a pilot to navigate his way to victory. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, be sure to subscribe. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.